Yeah, so I know they're first cousin, so it's gonna be a good reaction right here. Let me make sure I'm record. Okay, I am recording. All right, let's get her live feedback. She'll know that I'm linking with them in Kentucky, so this is gonna be funny. All right, here we go. Hey. All right, listen. What? <laughs> they say you about to do this. You look cute. Thank you. So do you. You look beautiful. No, I don't. <laughs> so you about to do a shoot. We're about to do a shoot. Huh? We're about to do a shoot, me, Promise, and Faith. Y'all about to do a shoot? Yeah. What type of shoot? It's like vibes, like, you know. But the photographer says he knows you. Does he? Let's see. How he know me? <laughs> 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 he pulled up to Kentucky. <laughs> what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? T to the M to the I, D, D. We are here with another video. This time, it is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to show you a little bit of the behind the scenes, but I'm really going to tell you and walk you through my approach with these shots that I got when I did my trip to Kentucky. Now, first of all, let's start off with the gear that I use. In this particular shoot, I had the Godox AD200, and you might be asking why. Well, in this particular case, if you can look and see in the video, there are three uh, models, and so I intended on shooting all three of them. And so I wanted to preserve the AD300 because in my experience, the shots and the battery dies a lot quicker than the 8200. Also, this particular scene, it was cloudy. Now, that cloud and that sun went in and out really rapidly, so I had to play with my settings quite a bit, okay? And for the softbox, the Manny Ortiz 36 inch beauty dish, and my main camera was the Nikon Z7 II with the 35 millimeter Sigma art lens. And so that's pretty much the setup I used in throughout this entire shoot right here. Now let's start off and go into this first scene. It is a beautiful barn, yep. And in my particular area where I live at in Maryland, I do not get to shoot with these often because they're either private property, things like that. So when I saw this structure, I knew immediately that I wanted to get some shots right there. And I wanted to put emphasis on getting a lot of texture with this gown in this particular area because it was a outfit that kind of was suited for the greenery outdoors, a field type of look. So it just really meshed well. Now with this one light setup, as I mentioned, it was cloudy, but then the sun would come out. And when it did come out, it just messed up my settings completely. So just to compensate for that, let me tell you what I use. Now, I want to say shout out to Freewell for sending me out these filters that I was able to use uh, during the course of my stint in Kentucky. Now, with this Nikon Z7 II, I was able to use the ND filter. Now, I have told you over and over how important ND filters are, and that really allowed me to stay out of high speed sync mode. That way I could get the most efficient uh, power out of my 8200 while also preserving the battery as much as I could. Now, the thing that I really like about this system is, as you can see, it is magnetic and it is stackable. So what I have underneath right now is a glow mist filter. Didn't really use it that much in this shoot, but I have showed you results from that as well. What they sent me was a glow mist filter, an ND filter, and a, a CPL filter, which I will show you a little bit more um, in some later videos, as I believe the CPL can be uh, better utilized with uh, more video. I did get some shots with it, but with more video. So the ND filter was truly my best friend, uh, allowing me to stay out of high speed sync mode and get the best uh, amount of shots with my Godox AD200. Now, 
I really focused on texture with these first uh, couple of shots that you can see in this frame and just had the model trying to flow very naturally. That was the key. I just wanted everything to be as natural as possible. And also I moved around and got several different angles. So the composition changed quite a bit, but I also paid attention to where the sun was coming when it did come out because I did not want to shoot directly with the sun on the model because it was pretty hard. So I always try to get those backlit shots with this barn set up. And so here are some of those shots. All right, so the next set of shots, keep in mind that there is just so much foliage in this particular area that I had to include it into my shot. So while the sun kept coming in and out, I decided to actually use some of the tree foliage to block some of the sunlight hitting the model. And so effectively using the tree foliage as my <laughs> nature scrim. So that allowed me to decrease my shutter speed and effectively the output that I needed to uh, illuminate the model uh, in total. So these particular shots, I had the model underneath the tree canopy and just kind of play with nature as well. And so what I stumbled upon next was a tree. And the tree was nice because it had flowers coming out of it, um, a nice uh, thick tree trunk. And then also, you know, we had the background and the background scene, I feel like put it all together, which was the barn. So try to get some foreground if you can, depending on the shot that you want, but definitely want the model. Again, we have the texture with the flowers, the tree trunk, and then in the background to add some interest to the image i saw that the barnyard would be in the image as well so i could get the focus on the model but then some of that nice bouquet but still be able to interpret what that barn is and so it came all together pretty well last but not least i believe the barnyard uh, shots were some of the best shots that I like just because of the texture with the, the barnyard. You have that raw texture of that wood. And then you also had the greenery from the flowers. And then you had kind of the overgrown kind of greenery taken over the barnyard. So that all kind of meshed so well that it kind of looked like a scene out of a book or a movie or something. I, I honestly feel like it was a very cinematic area to be in, right? So I really love those shots, but these last set of shots, I think I love just, just a tad bit more. I had the model inside of some tall grass and uh, was fortunate enough to have some flowers in the area as well. And so she's just kind of immersed in, in these uh, flowers and tall grass, which also go well with her gown and the whole aesthetic being um, without shoes, things like that. It just all worked well. And so with the uh, one light, the Godox 8200 and the 36-inch Beauty Dish. So that about wraps it up. I hope that you enjoyed this content that I gave you one like setup on location. We, we've been outside this summer. I haven't been outside as much as I want to, but I have been outside. And so I hope that you enjoy this content. You know, my channel really started 
being outside a lot with the off camera flash because I didn't have anywhere to do a studio shoot. So trying to get back to where we started from with the on location, off camera flash, especially because if you know where I am in Maryland, then you know that it is about to be winter time. So we have to take advantage as much as possible, but I definitely hope that you love the shots. I definitely hope you love this format of kind of talking you through everything that's going on while still trying to take these shots, still trying to record the behind the scenes for you and still working against the clock because I had to do several other shoots with them that day within a certain time limit. So taking all of that into account, I hope you like this video. Look, leave me a like, hit that like button, subscribe if you are not subscribed and leave a comment. Let me know which set you prefer the most. Let me know. I, I would definitely love to hear it in the comments below. As always, appreciate the support. T to the M to the IDD. Until the next one, 